I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Today, you're going to learn how to solve one of the most common problems that people experience with their quadcopter. The darn thing will not arm. There are a few conditions that need to be met in order for the quadcopter to arm, and I'm going to take you through them. Troubleshooting this scenario is simply a matter of process of elimination. You just go through the list. One of these things is probably... 99% of the time going to be the thing that's preventing you from arming. So let's go through the list. Problem number one is occurring right now on the screen. And if you are a clever person, you, maybe you can look at I'll give you a chance to guess what it is. Did you guess it's because the quadcopter is not level? That's the answer. By default, Betaflight and CleanFlight will refuse to arm the copter if the copter is not level. And the reason for this is that they don't want it accidentally arming in your hands. Now I use a thing called, I call it safer switch arming or sticky switch arming. And I've got a video about how to do that with your Tyrannus. I highly, highly recommend it. But if you don't have a Tyrannus or for any other reason you don't want to or can't do that, this is a nice precaution. If you're carrying the quadcopter in your hand, it will refuse to arm. So uh, what I need to do is level the quadcopter out and then the quadcopter will arm. Well, assuming none of the other things are wrong. Now, if your quadcopter is level, but it doesn't appear level on the model, then what you need to do is level the quadcopter out and hit calibrate accelerometer with the quadcopter flat on the table, and that will recalibrate your accelerometer. And sometimes the accelerometer can get miscalibrated just from getting whacked or thumped. Sometimes when you upgrade your firmware, the quadcopter will be miscalibrated. Uh, if at any time, the copter won't arm, you set it flat on the table, but the 3D model looks like that, then you need to calibrate your accelerometer. And what'll happen is, is this. Now that my quadcopter is actually crooked, I've miscalibrated this right now, but it'll level out and now it should arm. Now I'm gonna level my quadcopter back out correctly and set it still and hit calibrate again. Now it's correctly calibrated. There's a couple other things you can do uh, to, to help deal with this. If you go to the command line, the command that's relevant to this is called small angle. Get small angle. It shows that it's currently set to 30 degrees. Uh, I don't know if this is the default. I just set it to this value to, to do this demonstration. The default is 25, 30. I don't know what it is. If you want to disable small angle entirely, you can type set small angle equals 180. And what that means is that small angle is now the quadcopter will arm at any orientation, doesn't matter. I actually do this on my copters because I, well, like I said, I have the, the sticky switch arming, so there's no worry that I'm going to accidentally arm when I didn't mean to. And there's nothing more frustrating than, uh, for example, you, you set your quadcopter down on the starting blocks, you know, of a race getting ready to go. And because it's t tilted or maybe the accelerometer has gotten a little bumped and thinks the copter's tilted, it refuses to arm. That's so frustrating, I turn that off. Frankly, the other thing you can do is you can go to configuration and you can simply disable the accelerometer. Ta-da! And obviously the, you can't do <laughs> you can't do small angle if you don't if the accelerometer is disabled. Be aware that if you do disable this, you are disabling a safety feature. So don't do this willy-nilly. The safety feature is there for a reason, and make sure you understand the full implications of the fact that the quadcopter now can arm just when you're holding it in your hand, it's at any odd arbitrary angle. Okay, so that's number one. Here's the next thing that can cause your quadcopter not to arm. It is your CPU load. Now I've tried to get this copter up to a CPU load of 100% to make a good example for you, and I couldn't actually do it. <laughs> good for me. Uh, so it's at, but even uh, if, if you're on Betaflight 3.1, up to about 50% is, I think, safe to fly you probably will be able to arm and fly even higher than 50%. On older versions of Betaflight, if you happen to be running them, anything above, I think, around 30% is, is risky to fly with, and up above, above about maybe 50%, you may, a copter actually may refuse to arm. Uh, and what you'll know, this, you'll know this is happening because you'll see a slow flashing red light on the flight controller. That's an indicator that something is preventing arming. When I look down, if I was having the copter refuse to arm, and I look down here and I see an excess CPU load, what I would do is I would go, and number one, you can turn off some of the features, and the CPU load will go down, especially things like LED strip and soft serial. And the other thing you can do is you can reduce the, uh, the PID rate. 
So here it's at eight, eight kilohertz. I can take that down to something lower. And what I would do is I would just take it down to 4K, or if it was at 4K, I'd take it down to 2K. This is actually not a likely to happen on an F3 board if you're running Betaflight 3.1 or above, oh, there isn't anything above it. Uh, you can also, by the way, turn off the accelerometer. That actually saves a significant number of cycles here, I'll show you. Betaflight 3.1 has been optimized and it can run up to 8K, 8K with many features active and still have usable CPU utilization. You could see there I had all those features active, 8K, 8K, and was running at about 60%. The copter probably would fly just fine in that configuration. If you have an F1 board, well, number one, get with the times. You, no, I know, you guys are still out there. Fly in your nases and your CC3Ds, right? Um, if you're out of an F1 board, you're really gonna need to keep the PID loop rate down, maybe 2K or even 1K, to keep your CPU load low. Keep your CPU load low, okay? By the way, take a look now, we're at 16% at 8K, 2K, and if I disable the accelerometer, what do we go down to? Let's see. Now we're at 12%, so it dropped by it dropped by 25%. From 16 to 12, it dropped 4% or, or four percentage points, which was a 25% reduction in CPU utilization. All right, so the pretty, pretty significant reduction there for turning off the accelerometer. If you're not using the accelerometer, if you're not using auto level modes, go ahead and turn it off. It's not doing anything for you anyway unless you want small angle. Okay, well anyway. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look in the receiver tab. And in the receiver tab, we need to have the channels working correctly. Oh wait, the channels are not working correctly at the moment. And that would indicate that your receiver is not bound or it's not correctly hooked up to the flight control board. Or in this case, ha ha ha, my battery is not plugged in. So let's plug in the battery. Okay, oh, now the receiver's working correctly. Okay, good. So obviously you can't arm if your receiver's not working correctly, not rocket science there, but definitely still something to check. The next thing to check is your channel mapping. If you're doing stick arming, then when you do the stick command to arm, if the, if the channel mapping is not correct, you will not actually be inputting the stick command to arm. So I'm gonna go throttle down and yaw to the right, and that would be arming, except I'm doing switch arming, but if, you, if your channel mapping was incorrect, you would actually be doing throttle down and roll to the right. So you wouldn't arm. So double check that when you move the throttle, the throttle moves. When you move yaw, yaw moves, and so on, and so on. And you can cross check that against this little model of the co copter here. Make sure that it pitches and rolls and yaws correctly. If any of that is incorrect, reorder the RETA here to match what your actual channels are. So if your channel one is, if your, if your roll and your aileron, uh, sorry, if your yaw and your aileron are swapped, then just swap this from RETA to AETR. Um, just reorder those until you get the right results from moving your sticks. The next thing you're gonna need to check is that the throttle is below min check. So min check by default is 1100. And min check creates dead band at the bottom of your throttle. If you've ever noticed that you have to raise your throttle a good 10 or 15% before you even the motors even start to respond, that's because your min check is too high. And the reason min check is too high is because if the throttle does not go below min check, the copter won't arm. And when the Betaflight devs put min check, and they tried this a while back, they lowered the default value of min check and all these people who don't set up their transmitter correctly because they just don't know, and no, no shame in that, they were like, my copter won't arm. Well, so that's why the default value for min check is unreasonably high. You can see here, my, my channel is going down to 1015, right? And if I check min check, you can see that min check is 1005. So I need to do one of two things here. I can either raise min check or I can use my transmitter controls to adjust the range of that channel, which is actually the preferred thing to do. So on this, how you do this depends on your transmitter, but in the Tyrannus, I'm gonna go to the uh, outputs screen, and then go to the throttle channel, and I'm gonna adjust the endpoint. It'd be nice if I showed you how to do this, but <laughs> I don't have two cameras right now. And I'm just gonna lower that. You can see the throttle channel going down, until it hits 1000. There we go, That's and that's what you really wanna do for all of your channels. They really ought to all be like that. Oh, 2016, yikes. The reason these are messed up is because I installed the M9 gimbals in my Tyrannus, and I have two models, one for the D16 receivers, 
on my copters and one for the very few copters that I have with the D8 receivers on them. And I never re redid the endpoints after putting the M9 gimbals in for the D8 copters. So this is actually one of my very few D8 copters. And that's why this one's messed up. Okay, so if the throttle does not go below min check, you cannot arm. Finally, we're going to go over here in the modes tab. And we're going to check the arm mode. Now, this is only if you're doing switch arming, which I, I recommend that you do switch arming. I think we all have many, many channels to spare on our fancy schmancy 6 channel, 8 channel, 10 channel transmitters. Uh, even more channels. Maybe. Uh, so just use one for arming. I think it's better than stick arming, at, le at least because you can disarm rapidly if you need to. Now, if we look right here, uh, I'm going to flip the switch. And what we want to do is we want to look at, this is the current channel value. And when I move the switch, we want to see that it moves into the range defined by these sliders. And you can hear my motor spinning there. And this mode goes yellow, which indicates that we have successfully armed. Okay. If, if for example, something was preventing me from arming, like, like for example, min check is too low or the throttle is not, the throttle is not going below min check. So I just set min check to 999 when my throttle's minimum value is 1,000, which means that the throttle will not be below min check. So now if I go to the modes and I do my switch arming, you can see that the slider has gone into the defined range, but arm has not turned yellow. And that's indicating that something is preventing arming from occurring, one of the things that I just defined to you. Okay, so when you see that happening, that's when you are gonna look for one of these things. But let's say you go to arm, and when you go to arm, you flip the switch, and this little indicator does not go into the defined mode. Well, you got one of two choices. Number one, you can rearrange your transmitter mixing so that this goes to the defined place, or you can just move the slider to wherever the indicator is. Just put the switch into the arm position, and then wherever this goes, just put the slider there, and you then the switch going to that position will make the copter arm. And that's the simplest thing for you to do because it doesn't involve screwing around with any funky, uh, you know, any mixing or anything in your, in your copter. So for example, let's just use a different aux channel. If I just look at aux three here, I can see that as I move this switch between the three positions, that indicator moves to one of three positions. If I wanted to use that to arm my copter, I would just put the switch into the arm position and then adjust the slider so they cover that position. Don't be too precise, by the way. Don't like, don't like, not like that, but move the slider so they cover the position, and then I would save. I'm not gonna do that, though. And that's gonna bring us to the end of this video. Now you know the things that I check when my copter won't arm. And I was inspired to make this video because just tonight I went to fly and my freaking copter wouldn't arm, and so I had to run through this checklist. Uh, and now when you ask me, my copter won't arm, this is the video I'm going to send you to. Hope this was helpful. Hope you learned something. And as always, happy flying.